Hi, it's September 28th. My name is Reginald Angus Argu. I'm at the BC Lions training facility. I'm here with uh, Jamie Terrace. And I, Jamie, um, you played 16 years in the CFL with the BC Lions. Correct. 1994, I think, was one of the best games that the BC Lions played. You won against Baltimore, uh, 26 to 23. Correct. On the foot of uh, Louis Pasek. That's right. He missed the he missed the one before. We can't forget that. And then, yeah. <laughs> and that's actually the ring that uh, we won in that game from uh, Baltimore and BC. So it was a thrilling victory. Uh, you know, the Americans versus uh, Canada's team. Of course, we were half American, half Canadian. So it was yeah. very interesting trying to juggle that dynamic. But. You know, being a Canadian kid growing up here, really wanted to keep the cup here, and all that emotion surrounding that was very important in that game. Of course, it was played here at BC Place, so yeah. it was a great deal of, uh, you know, uh, of excitement around the city and just being able to uh, to play in your own hometown. And we, I think, were the last team to ever win the Grey Cup in the, in their home on their home field. So, so it's it was very special, very special moment for us. And of course, we were the underdogs. We came in from from out of nowhere, and they were the giant Americans that going to destroy us and uh, we took that very personally and ended up winning them at the very end. And what what is the, throughout your, your time in the CFL, how did you see the game changing over the years to what it's now reached and what changes do you see still ahead of the CFL league? Well obviously the players have gotten bigger and stronger and faster. I think the offenses have gotten more complex. The passing game has been highlighted more. I'd actually like to see him go back to more running, and I think that that would shock some people. But you know, I think that uh, in that regard, uh, the level of professionalism I think has obviously increased as more money and attention has been devoted to professional sport. Uh, so from that perspective, you know, it's bigger, bigger, better, stronger, faster with regards to the athletes and, and a higher level of coaching, really. So hopefully, the product has continued to evolve and, and the level of football has continued to grow. Well, I still see it um, as a Canadian myself. I see it as a blue-collar league because of uh, you know how much the players are being paid here for the CFL compared to the NFL. It's like they're you know they're one of the working class that's basically continuing playing it for the love of the game. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, I I, I used to laugh because uh, I remember my first year, someone looked at my paycheck and and they laughed and they said, "How could you play for that?" And I said, "You know, I love playing. That's the whole point." You. You know, it wasn't like uh, you, you were doing it for free your whole life and all of a sudden you got a chance to do it professionally. And uh, it, this was a dream come true. And that's certainly the way I, I played. I remember my first few months with the team, I, I kept forgetting to pick up my check because I forgot we were getting paid for it. And then, and then rent came in, I figured I better go get my check. But, but it was kind of that, that very much what you said, very much uh, guys playing because of the love of the game. Uh, certainly the money has gotten a little bit better, but very much still a working class league, very much gate driven. Uh, the guys are really down to earth, really reach out in the community, uh, get involved in the community. I think that's one of the biggest differences from our athletes is they're very accessible and very much a part of our community. And what, what kind of uh, nonprofit organizations are you yourself involved with that are helping the youth and also uh, the BC Lions at the same time? Yeah, well, I've been involved with Big Brothers for a very long time on their board of directors and done a, a number of different roles with them. So uh, for over well over 10 years now I've been involved with that organization, great organization. And of course that's about mentoring, uh, putting a, you know, a, a mentor in the life of any kid that needs one really. So it's a, it's a great thing, it's, uh, it's where the rubber hits the road, it's not about giving money or research, it's about a relationship with, with another kid. So I think that it doesn't get any better than that in terms of, of organizations. Uh, so personally that's one that I'm really proud of. Uh, also done some work with Athletes in Action and uh, obviously with my faith and spreading my faith and that sort of thing is all, all, was always very important with me, with me personally. Uh, but as an organization, we, uh, we do a lot of things now, very, very different than when I played where we reacted more to the community. Now we have specific programs that reach out. We have uh, the Fortis BC Energy Champions Program, which talks about sustainability. That's, that's geared towards uh, elementary uh, school. We have a Read, Write and Roar, which is a liter early literacy program from grade one to three, which reaches out to over 20,000 students. We've got a program called Lions Pride, which is for youth at risk, and that's more at a high school level, which it specifically targets these kids that are on the edge in response to some of the gang activities that were going on, the poor choices that kids were making just because they wanted to feel part of a team and sort of, hey guys, there's another way to do that and it could be through sports or something else and, and using our guys as some role models to these kids that are on the edge. And that's been a great program for us as well. And then this year we're starting a program called Be More Than a Bystander, which is all about ending violence against women and using the profile of athletes to reach out and, and, and change the way people think about those relationships. Uh, that uh, and, and that we can, as men can add our voice uh, to make the, the world and BC in particular a safer place for women to live in. Well, 
thank you so much for agreeing to the interview there, Jamie. Hey, no problem. Pleasure. Thanks for, uh, for your, your past and, and your dedication to our country.